What do you think of when I say, if Twitter and Instagram had a baby that could speak? That's what Ray Punzalan of Eavesdrop says he's created. See if you agree. Well, I'm Ray. I'm the Chief Operating Officer of Eavesdrop. This is Otto Kuna. He's the CFO. Ramal Paraiso. He's the CEO of Eavesdrop. We're a team of five. We have two engineers, and then we have an extended team aside from that. But uh, what Eavesdrop is basically about, it's an audio-based social networking app that allows you to record up to 10, min 10 minutes of audio time. Um, what we like to tell users is that uh, basically if Twitter and Instagram had a baby that could speak, <laughs> it would be Eavesdrop. So that's pretty much uh, what we like to tell people how Eavesdrop is all about. I think as far as hurdles, um, we are, are in different fields, like I'm in anesthesia, um, Ray is an infectious disease, but Ramon does video for um, our Chicago um, team, and we haven't done tech at all, so this is kind of something totally unknown to us. Um, another hurdle we've um, overcome is, um, actually, when we first, actually on the eve of our launch, um, we were um, actually in a legal battle with another Chicago startup with the same, almost the exact same name, they only have one E. So we were locked in a legal battle for about, I want to say about six months, we lost a lot of time and money during that time, which we're a bootstrap company, so we're not funded at all, so we use our own money, so it kind of uh, put a damper on our fund, and we were able to do a lot of things we wanted to do, so that's a lot of, of some few hurdles that we have experienced during our startup time here. Oh, uh, well, last year we were at South by Southwest um, as well, and we were on Mashable, they wrote three articles about us. We're in Inc. Magazine as what are four startups to look, look out for. And when, it was our first time working on an app, so we didn't expect all that exposure. We were actually coming in here just to get uh, feedback from everybody. And, and we wanted our app to be launched at South by last year, but uh, we, got, we didn't get accepted at the app store. So we had to change our direction of how we wanted to promote it. And so having all that exposure, people were thinking we were a big company, but we actually we weren't. <laughs> you know? Uh, we wanted to go under the radar and um, just really develop the app slowly. So we continued with our plan when we launched April of 2013. We didn't really do a lot of advertising uh, or, or marketing. What we did was any user that downloaded the app, we engaged them. We talked to them, we emailed them, said, hey, what do you think of the app? Uh, what, what changes would you like? And we kept doing that for about six months and taking notes, and we completely redesigned it. And this year, we launched our redesign, our update, uh, just this past Friday, just in time for startup uh, debut and startup spotlight. And you know, we, we overcame that, we changed things around, and I think now uh, we've learned so much uh, from, from starting an app to where we are now, you know, because we've never done it before in this time around. So a lot of our communication is done by Google Hangout, GitHub. Um, we use WhatsApp a lot. So a lot. Of, um, we actually have one of our engineers based off of uh, London. So we communicate via email, you know, GitHub and such. So a lot of those sources, resources, what we mainly rely on in creating and developing this app. I mean, we're talking uh, through email, through WhatsApp, Google Hangout is great, but at the same time, it's tough because sometimes uh, the communication is lost or uh, we can't get things done quickly enough because of the time constraints. So I think, you know, whenever we get together in the same room, I mean, even us three, we all live in Chicago, but we don't get to hang out and work on this together in the same room all the time. But whenever we do, the energy is great. Uh, our minds start flowing. I mean, just being here at South by, we just came up with more ideas to develop the app, some new, new features that we want to use. We're really excited about it, and I think uh, what inspires us to keep going is just the fact that we could create more things with the app. It's such a simple idea, sharing audio you know, with people, sharing that voice, and uh, just having that free-flowing thought instead of you know, texting and changing and editing. You can just speak your mind and hear all the mistakes that you do, and just that natural feeling. You think that like, the audio component is what's important? I think that it's missing in social media now to actually how powerful the voice can be. So we want to just sort of emphasize that on social media now. 
And I think another valuable resource that we actually haven't said yet is our, our friends and family who have supported us like through the beginning and end. I mean, like we just shot a whole commercial and it was shot by the help of our friends, and family, you know, people donating their time and our, their video editing. So like a lot of people have helped us through this journey. So I think our friends and family have been an invaluable source as far as um, support, like mentally, physically, emotionally, all that stuff. So I think that's kind of helped us through this journey. <laughs> Um, I think it's, I would say, financially, because, like I said before, we are a bootstrap company. Um, and with that saying that, um, really, our resources are limited, you know, as far as marketing, as far as developing for another platform, as far as, you know, hiring developers to work on a full-time, everything's, everything's kind of on a part-time basis, because we work on a, a full-time job. This is our second full-time job, which is our passion. Um, so I think right now, um, we're looking to the investment and the funding aspect of it. So um, we're kind of, like, new to this realm of, of raising funds. So that's kind of the best we're looking at. Um, we actually are talking to a few investors now. Um, we kind of see what's going to fit with us. Because, you know, just because someone has someone doesn't mean it's going to work with us. You know, we have to leverage off each other. You know, our personalities and their, you know, their contacts and everything like that. So that's it's kind of a tough um, We want, we want to grow with right them as well, right? And we're also looking to do more marketing. Uh, like, like he said, like Adi said, we're, we're doing, we did commercials. We do that in-house. We shot some commercials. Um, we do our graphic design and, and, our, and our marketing ads all in-house, so we're ready to put that out there. We're trying to get some more uh, media attention on yourself, and, and we're going to do a few more interviews. And you know, I, I work for uh, Chicago Bears, so I'm going to try to use that outlet. You know, I have some of the guys use the app, and uh, you know, see where it goes from there. We believed in this product, but we just mainly wanted to focus on the actual service that we're providing. We initially came up with the idea of being able to comment alongside of, uh, you know, a movie or an interview or, or some sort of sporting event. But as far as entrepreneurs, I think that um, we never really label ourselves as entrepreneurs. We think that uh, we wanted to create a product that we believed in, and so we're just going from there. We we, we created a service that we that we wanted. We just have a passion just to change things. There's so many problems in the world. We, whenever we're together, we're like, oh, we can do this, we can do that, we can do that. And um, we just see so many solutions. And sometimes it makes us entrepreneurs because we want to find a fix to that solution. Um, we just have a passion for so many things. Like, um, actually, this, nobody knows this, but this company was built on wanting to do something for the environment. Um, so we did, couldn't find a way to find money to do that. So we built the company to have money so we can do things for the environment. Um, and to make it better for us, for our kids, you know, for everybody. Sometimes that, that word entrepreneur makes it seem like we're just after the money. <clears throat> but like they said, we're, we're just trying to create a, a really cool product. And I think we're just problem solvers. Mm -hmm. you know, all entrepreneurs are problem solvers. We, instead of complaining about things, we write them down, we write down a bunch of problems, and we just write solutions to it. And then that's how we kind of gain ideas and how can we fix things? How could we uh, innovate, right? And, you know, I mean, by doing that, I think we can inspire others to do the same way because, again, we have different, different jobs. We don't, we don't create apps. But I think, you know, what keeps us going is the fact that if we do well with this, I think we can inspire others that anybody can do it. Anybody could do anything they want. I know it sounds cliche, but it's true. You know, you just, you just got to work hard and you got to have, you got to believe in it and you just have to solve problems. When we first started the app, I actually had an iPhone for just a year, and um, I was, you know, I was interested in how apps worked. And so when I, I talked with these guys, we we're trying to think of different things that we could do to start. What, what company are we going to do? What are we going to build? And we wanted to just do something that we don't know about, so we could research it and learn from it. And social networking was awesome because I liked it. You know, I just I, I've had it for a year. I started tweeting and doing all these different things, and I like that social aspect of it. And at the same time, um, we, we felt like there was a hole in it, that there's something missing. And we liked talking, and we felt that voice was something missing, and we just pursued it. We just said, hey, you know what, maybe we can fill in that hole. Maybe there's another option that people could use to do social networking. I, I, I think 
that they're going to love it because um, I always say this, I think that voice is lost in social media. Mm -hmm. I think that we use a lot of text-based communication on Twitter or on WhatsApp or texting. I mean, people are communicating through texting more than voice nowadays. And a lot of things get mixed up, this communication. I think that we lose the um, annotations in our voice um, and the emotion in our voice. And I think we just want to bring that personal um, voice back to social media. So they're going to care about that. I mean, it's better to get a, like a happy birthday, or, you know, hey, we're singing, you know, than a happy birthday text. You, you're on Facebook, you get all oh, these happy birthday messages, but they're all the same. You know, it might be some a different user, but all the same to me. But when you hear the voice, it's, it's, it's going to touch an emotional part, an instinctual thing that's in you that's going to like strike a chord. There, there's room for text. There's room for photos. You know, but sometimes when you hear a person's voice, you really, you know, you it hits kind of like an emotional sense, right? You you remember things. It's familiar. You, know, you could look through photos all the time, but you know, when you when you talk to somebody that you haven't seen in a long time, like if if you live somewhere else and uh, you live in another city and you miss your mom and she recorded an e-drop, right? And you listen to it, it's, it'll probably hit you harder than just reading a text like, hey, hope all is well. Or here's a, you, know, look, you saw a picture of you and your mom. I mean, it's cool, there's room for that, but there's room for voice. And I think, you know, it's, it's been missing for a long time and, and now our users are, our users are gonna love it because it's something new. It's something that they could start using and like really get into you, it's really exciting. Well, mainly the, our product in each other. We, we inspire each other. We constantly are continuing to keep coming up with ideas, like what Ramel was saying, adding onto our app what features we could look forward to in the future. But yeah, just mainly being, I guess, inspired by these guys. I mean, we work with each other, we keep coming up with new ideas. Um, not even just with eavesdrop, just other stuff, like just problem solving. And we love to inspire others. Um, like I was saying earlier, you know, like we have been, never created that before. We work in a totally different industry, and just seeing somebody else do it and not knowing anything about it, you know, shows that you can do it too. So we love to inspire people. And every time we come up to people, like, how'd you do that? Well, I can do it too. If Ramel can do it, I can do it. If Ray can do it, I can do it. So I think what keeps us going is the inspiration in others, just paying it forward and showing them that you can do it too. You know, we're no different than you. You know, we're just we're the same people, but. I can do what you can do. We don't have that much time sometimes, <laughs> but if there's somebody who asks us a question of how we got somewhere, we're, we'll always take the time to to chat with them, just even for a few minutes, just to kind of help them out and say, hey, this is how we did it, and maybe you could do this, or we give them advice. And, you know, whenever you get that that uh, feedback where they say, you know what, you really inspired me to do this, and you know, we push them. We're like, you should do it, you know, because. You know, what's, what's, what's life if you're not inspired, or what's life if you don't inspire? And I think that's what really keeps, keeps us going all together. Yeah. <laughs> well, for me, these guys inspire me. Um, my friends and family inspire me. Just, just to see, like, what they're going through, and, you know, it, it helps me keep going. You know, I, I, I see my friends uh, with their careers and their struggles, and, again, like, you know, just, just any of the friends and family helps me keep, keep going. And, um, you know, just again, just so I can inspire them. That's what, that's what inspires me. Yeah, I agree. Same for me. You know, I, I, get, I, inspired, I get inspired by these guys, um, friends and family as well. I mean, they're just a big emotional support for me. I agree. Same with them. Um, I, started from, from start to finish, I would say that we've gone through a beautiful transformation. I mean, how we are when we first started the company, how we are now are totally different. We're more ambitious, we're more, and we are, our need is so much quicker, we make decisions so much quicker. And I can tell that I've got an influence from these two to be better. And sometimes when Romel is like doing all this stuff for Ray, it's like, okay, I gotta step up my game. So I get inspired by these guys and family and friends and all these things too.